Hey. Um, thank you. Um, before we start, um, because we always need a little spiritual guidance, um, this morning to give our invocation, uh, the chair is going to recognize Pastor Dwayne Ross of Divine Destiny Community Fellowship. He is here today as the guest of Councilwoman Janie Blackwell. I would ask all members, guests, and visitors to please rise. Good morning. It's an, it, is, it is an honor to stand here to open up this prayer this morning. And I would like to encourage our Councilwoman, thank our Councilwoman Blackwell for the invitation and her support staff and to encourage all of our city leaders to keep on fighting what the Bible calls the good fight of faith. And the reason why it's called the good fight of faith is because we always win. We win. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come to you once and again to thank you for this awesome new day. The Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. As we wake up and look around and observe this new day, we can look at the seasons and see that they are changing. The beautiful leaves are changing colors and falling off of the trees, and the air is beginning to change. And so as in the spiritual, it is in the natural. Our seasons are changing. Things are getting better. We are entering, entering into our new season. We're going to remember in this prayer, ask the Lord to remember in this prayer our city officials, our police department, our fire department, our schools, our teachers, our youth. We're asking the Lord to look upon our senior citizens, which are often overlooked. Those that are less fortunate, the homeless, those that are just everyday hardworking people, two and three jobs just to make a living or to make ends meet. As I conclude this prayer for this great city and for our great communities and for our great leaders, I would like to declare something called the Deuteronomy blessing, Deuteronomy 28. And I declare and decree in this atmosphere that we are blessed in our cities. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed coming and we're blessed going. Our jobs are blessed. Our homes are blessed. Our physical bodies are being healed and blessed. We are blessed. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Council shall be at ease.
Thank you. Um, and thanks to Pastor for those very inspiring words. Uh, we have a special guest today, uh, no stranger to us all. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I'd like to just recognize uh, some good friends and individuals who are here. Uh, would be appropriate because of their uh, interest in today's subject matter. Um, and if I miss anybody's name, you have to look at the table to my left because that's who wrote the list. All right. <laughs> I'd like to recognize our good friend, State Senator Anthony Williams. And State Senator Vincent Hughes. And I saw him. Don't, where, where are you going? You're not leaving, are you? Rep. All right, all right, all right. Our good friend, State Representative Bill Keller. And um, a gentleman who is, seems like, at least today, can't make up his mind if he wants to be a councilman or a, a state rep. Our uh, good friend, State Representative Eddie Nelson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and our great city commissioner, Lisa Daly. And our good friend from labor, uh, Henry Nicholas. And Gabe, Gabe Morgan from SEIU. Hey. And Jerry, I know this is a special day for you. Our good friend Jerry Jordan from the PFT. And our man Pat Eiding. There he is. And I saw Ryan, Ryan Boyer. Where's Ryan? And a former member of this body, Denny O'Brien. Denny, you still here? So again, if I miss anybody's name, I'll speak to these people over here. Um, so right now, um, we would like to introduce um, our special guest uh, in this chamber today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to introduce to you the mayor of the city of Philadelphia, Jim Kenney. That would be the uh, 10th Council District Mayor, uh, Brian O'Neill. <laughs> Where's the mayor? Okay. He's coming. Promise. Easy. That's pretty weird. The teleprompter's backwards. <laughs> I guess I'm going from notes. Now it's forward. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending. Must be something big going on today, so thank you. Nearly two years ago, I stood in this room and told the story of a young man I met at the Pennypack School. The Pennypack School was inside the Philadelphia Industrial Correctional Center on State Road. And the young man, along with his classmates, were all charged with serious crimes. Despite his situation, the young man told me that he was enjoying his time at Pennypack. He said it was the best school he had ever attended. After telling his story, I asked the members of this body to take on a big challenge so we could get more of our children on the road to Penn instead of on the road to Pennypack. City Council met that challenge, and as a result, we've made historic investments in Philadelphia's children. Nearly 3,000 children have gained access to free, 
quality pre-K. 6,500 students and their families have been served by, by a community school. And we're on the verge of kicking off the first round of rebuild projects, which will provide much needed improvements to libraries, rec centers, and parks that serve our children and, and their families. These achievements were no small feat, but ultimately our children's success and Philadelphia's success depends on the quality of our schools. And right now, we are leaving our city's fate largely in someone else's hands. If we do not have quality schools in every neighborhood, the people who have helped to reverse the city's decades of population loss will not stay. The children whose families cannot afford to leave will be unprepared to compete in the 21st century economy. Businesses will not come to Philadelphia and those that are here won't have the local talent pool to grow. The city's poverty and crime rates will remain stagnant or they will worsen. So today, after nearly two years of careful consideration and research, 98 school visits, and conversations of 158 principals, and countless parents, teachers, and business leaders, I'm officially calling on the members of the School Reform Commission to vote to dissolve at their next scheduled meeting. After they dissolve, we will return to the school board as it is, cur is currently written in the charter, a nine-member board appointed by the mayor. These, <laughs> these nine board members are recommended to the mayor by a pa nominating panel. The nominating panel is composed of 13 Philadelphians, including four members of the public at large, as well as nine leaders of organizations described in the charter whose institutions support the public good across the city. When the nominating panel is in place later this year, we will begin to take in recommendations and applications for individuals interested in serving on the Board of Education. We will select the members of the school board with one goal in mind, ensuring every child has access to quality schools no matter where they live or no matter what they look like. And I believe there are four primary factors that must be present for that goal to become a reality. The first is accountability. For too long, we've pointed fingers at each other, whether it be traditional public schools and public charter schools, or city elected officials and state elected officials. Again and again, we've told the people of Philadelphia that the state of their schools are someone else's responsibility. That ends today. When the SRC dissolves itself and we return to a school board appointed by the mayor, you can hold me and future mayors accountable for the success or failure of our schools. The buck will stop with us. This model, this model will create quality schools, will create quality schools. In a 2016 report, the Pew Charitable Trust found that school district's governance must avoid uncertainty about accountability in order for its schools to succeed. School districts under mayoral control, specifically Boston, New York City, and Washington, D.C., have seen substantial improvement in student performance in recent years. I also hope that clearer accountability can provide an opportunity to shift the unhealthy debate between public charter schools and traditional district schools. The district currently serves over 200,000 students, including the nearly 70,000 of those students attending a public charter school. I am responsible, we are responsible, to every one of those children, no matter the type of school that they attend. And, we will be, and I will be judged, and we will be judged by the voters on the number of high-performing schools in every neighborhood, not whether those schools are district or public charters. The second factor necessary for our schools to succeed is collaboration between our schools and our city leadership. Philadelphia's collaboration with the school district has increased dramatically in the last few years. We've embarked on a project to create 25 community schools by the year 2020, 
We've increased our financial contribution by $520 million annually over the last six years with the courageous help of this City Council. The district has been a key strategic partner in PHL Pre-K, serving not only as a provider, but also lending their expertise in the program's design and implementation. The Read by Fourth campaign was critical to the increase we saw in reading test scores for our elementary school students this year. And the Philadelphia Police School Diversion Program has reduced school-based arrests by nearly 70%. In each of these areas, when the city and the school district had a shared goal, we were able to succeed. Local control will multiply these benefits because we will now be working under one common vision with the full support of the city's departments and resources behind our school district. Specifically, we can improve the ways in which school facilities are made available for community use during non-school hours. We can look at transportation planning for safer routes to schools. And we can also improve our students' career readiness, working with the managing director's office and the commerce department. The district has committed to all high school students gaining a quality work experience, including a summer job, mentoring or shadowing with an employer. All students will also receive a post-secondary plan that helps them prepare for the career or college of their choice. The other two fundamentals our schools need to succeed are adequate resources and strong leadership. During the past 15 years of SRC control, we've had three superintendents with, with current superintendent Dr. Height serving the longest term. Dr. Height has helped our students succeed even while dealing with very difficult resource challenges. Over the last several years, the district has had to make hundreds of millions of dollars in cuts. They've closed more than 24 schools and laid off nearly 4,000 employees. Our schools were left without full-time nurses or counselors, and many classrooms had persistent teacher vacancies. Children lost months of valuable education time, setting them back in test scores, and more importantly, setting them back in life. Some of them never made up that lost ground. Children with chronic health issues had to turn to principals or other non-medical staff to administer life-saving medication. Extracurricular activities were reduced and in some cases altogether eliminated. <clears throat> Our teachers went five years without a contract or a raise, all while working more and more to make up for these cuts. It is only in the last couple of years that Dr. Height was able to address some of these issues thanks to an increase in financial support from Philadelphians. Thanks to these investments, the graduation rate is now up to 66% and schools classified as persistently dangerous have been eliminated. The latest test score showed that 35% of third graders are now reading on grade level and that's up from 30% the year prior. There were also small improvements in algebra, biology and literature test scores in high schools. But we cannot expect Dr. Height, our teachers, our students, to take this incremental progress and expand it into greater success while enduring another cycle of drastic cuts. Due to factors outside its control, the district is facing a deficit which begins next year and will grow to nearly $1 billion over the next five years. I am unwilling to sacrifice the hard-won pro hard progress our students and go back, our students have made and go back to the days of classrooms without teachers and schools without counselors or nurses. <clears throat> I am committed to providing the supports Dr. Height needs to produce better educational outcomes for all of our kids. So in the next budget, I will propose a plan to meet the district's needs. These investments go toward a capital improvement program that will begin to address our school's many physical building needs. <clears throat> in addition, a ninth grade academy which provides academic supports and counseling to new students in order to decrease the dropout rate modernizing our CTE programs and expanding access to them so that our students are prepared to compete, expanding college access through continued free PSAT and SAT testing for all students, more AP classes and the first middle college program in Pennsylvania where high school students can earn an associate's degree, hiring specialized reading coaches for every school and improving training and instructional support for K-3 teachers, equipping every K-3 classroom with new libraries full of books and remodeling K-3 classrooms and schools with the lowest literacy rates, increasing the number of bilingual counseling assistants, 
filling all teacher vacancies and continuing to increase the diversity of our teaching workforce so our teachers look like the city they serve. And all of those other supports we need to bring quality schools to every neighborhood in our city. Let me be clear, there will be no easy solutions for funding these resources. The district has nothing left to cut. They have negotiated significant concessions from all their unions and reduced their administrative staff to just 3% of the budget. And the district's projections already assume that it will close two district schools a year based on declining enrollment trends and aging facilities. Unfortunately, the same is true of our city departments. While our city departments are already looking at targeted budget cuts, so much was already cut during the recession that the money to meet the district's needs solely through cuts just isn't there. And while local control may ultimately create administrative or operational efficiencies, these will take years to identify and effectively transition. Delinquent taxes are also not the answer. The city and school district's five-year plans already assume a total of $600 million in delinquent collections. Pilots, while worth exploring, only produce about $30 million annually for the city of Boston. And help from the Commonwealth is not coming. It's not coming. Our delegation has worked dilig diligently over the past two years to extend our local cigarette and sales tax and adjust the formula so Philadelphia would not be negatively impacted by our move to full valuation. But the structural issues the state faces make additional help for Philadelphia highly unlikely. No matter how anyone may feel about it, that's the reality. To say otherwise would only push off the responsibility we all say we want with local control. So the final plan we will propose to meet the district needs will be difficult, and it will require everyone to pitch in. But the alternative is far worse. If we do not provide our children the resources they need, the cycle of budget cuts and instability which have hindered our students' success for decades will continue. And the Philadelphia will slowly but surely fail. That's a dark prediction, but it's an accurate one. Our schools are the key to reducing our poverty rate. Education is the only way out. If we don't create quality schools, then the, belief, then the brief renaissance our city is experiencing will evaporate, and families will choose to move in search of a better education for their children. If our schools don't attract new businesses or produce quality talent, then no new jobs will come. If we don't take responsibility for the fate of our schools, then we will continue to relegate generations of Philadelphia families to poverty. I am not willing to do that. We must choose to meet this moment and become the masters of our own destiny. If we pair local control with increased investments, we can finally confront our city's most persistent challenge. We can create a school district that is more collaborative, more financially stable, more accountable to Philadelphians, and as a result, a school district where our students progress and, excel and acceler is accelerated. If we, do, if we decide not to, not to pass the buck, but rather double down on our, on our commitments, we can ensure that no child's fate is determined by their zip code. I have, a, I have a vision of a child that is leaving a quality pre-K in, in June and entering kindergarten in September who is prepared to progress through eighth grade and do well and then make a choice to go to a regular high school, an accelerated high school, a CTE school and do well there and then have the opportunity to go to college or to graduate school. And that if companies like Amazon or others come into our city, and it doesn't have to just be Amazon, it could be any of the companies we, we attract. If that child, if that young man or woman, now graduating from college or from, from graduate school, can accept a job for $75,000, $100,000, and be able to raise a family if they choose, to buy a home in our neighborhoods, to make our neighborhoods stable, and to make sure to ensure that their children and their children's children for generations will not be facing poverty and opioid addiction and gun, and gun violence and crime, but will be able to do the things that our parents all wanted us to do and have a better life than we've had. We owe it to those kids and we will do this together. Thank you.